South Africa, coming from Cape Town, coming from Durban, coming from the Eastern Cape. They're coming hundreds of miles to work in these mines. Right now they're making, in US dollars, 500 or less a month. So to put this in perspective, lest you think this is an adequate salary, $500 a month, on average, South African workers, for every formally employed South African worker, is supporting 10 people with that monthly salary. So $500 a month for 10 people. We're talking $50 a month per person. And this is what, what Lonman Mines and what implicitly even NUM, the National Union of Mine Workers and the ANC, think is an adequate salary. Ten, uh, $10, sorry, $50 per person per month. Is this adequate? $50 per person per month? No. So when workers have demanded a living wage, the union sent them home. If you've been following this in the paper, it says NUM, the National Union of Mine Workers, affiliated with the ANC in Kosatu. NUM refused to support them in this struggle. A similar struggle to nearby Impala Platinum, uh, Platinum Plant in, in February had the same result, leading to conflict between the ANC-aligned union, again, the National Union of Mine Workers, and an upstart union. If you've been following this in the paper, this is AMCU. So you have a conflict between two unions here, NUM and AMCU. When workers at Lawnmen, and this is the, the mine where the massacre occurred, demanded a living wage, they're met with a week of police violence. And this culminated in the massacre. But in the week leading up to this, uh, to this massacre, you had consistent police violence, 10 dead, including police and, and private security guards. And so now when this is being framed, everyone's weeping over, over two dead police officers, two dead security guards, but rarely mentioned the six others, four remain unidentified, were killed in this week. Right now, at least 34 have been confirmed dead, and most likely we're looking at, at over 40 dead, dozens injured, and many remain jailed. I mean, that's right, at, at this point, after this massacre, we might have upwards of 100 people in jail. And this was a premeditated attack. I mean, I also want to reiterate that this was a premeditated attack on the part of the ANC. And so in a statement released yesterday by a group called the Democratic Left Front, that's a mass coalition of Marxist groups, of anarchist groups, of independently aligned groups, primarily based in Cape Town, they wrote the following. From eyewitness accounts and academic assessments provided at the public meeting, all the evidence of police action points to premeditated and orchestrated state violence. A day after the provincial police commissioner <laughs> stated that they will end the strike, workers were herded were towards a barbed wire exit with tear gas and rubber bullets, then gunned down as they tried to make their way through a narrow opening. Moreover, other workers were randomly shot in other parts, in and around Horror Mountain, as it was called, and some were run down with police caspers. Which are, which are small tanks. We believe that the state at its highest levels has a case to answer for the cold-blooded murder of the lawnmen, lawnmen workers. So how has the government responded? The ANC and the Communist Party, who governs an alliance with the ANC and Kosatu, the tripartite alliance as it's called, have openly blamed workers for their own deaths. That's right, they've openly blamed workers for their own deaths as workers remain in jail. Some CP propagandists have even celebrated their deaths, saying that the police did the right thing here. They, they put this in print. If you search online, it's, it's pretty easy to find. Violence against workers has become the norm in, in post-apartheid South Africa. I mean, when I was there for, for six months recently, I did, of course didn't see anything on this scale, but it was a regular occurrence to see rubber bullets fired at elderly ladies from point-blank range, often to their face. Violence against workers here is, is the norm. And while this is, is clearly a departure for the norm, a massacre of, of upwards of 40 people, most likely, Violence against workers is the norm in post-apartheid South Africa, just as it's the norm here. Now, on the bright side, this could potentially open a new arena of class struggle in South Africa, and it's up to us to show our solidarity with our counterparts in South Africa. ...is attacking workers all around the world to try to overcome 
the tendency of the rate of profit to decline. They have to attack us everywhere, and we see the worst kind of attack just happen in South Africa. Don't think this won't happen again, and it's not happening right now in other mines and other workplaces where they're trying to drive down the conditions of workers. I see signs calling for the expropriation of De Beers, for the expropriation of, of low men, for the expropriation of... <coughs> Excuse me. Where's the sign? Of Anglo-American minds. What we have to realize is that this imperialist companies are hand in hand with the capitalist government of South Africa. Not only the ANC is responsible, but we call it the tripartite regime. What is the tripartite regime? That's an alliance between the South African Communist Party, the ANC, and the COSATU. We have to understand that this is not the only choice that the workers have to make. When they decide how to build their movement, we do not have to enter into governments with the capitalists. And this is the downfall of the South African anti-apartheid movement, is that we founded a government that was based on an alliance with the capitalist class. And today, we're seeing what that means. That means that in the name of the South African Communist Party, in the name of COSATU, in the name of the National Union of Miners, workers are being shot down. What for? For the profits of Anglo-American, for the profits of De Beers, for the profits of the platinum mines and the gold miners. We have to call for the right of the South African workers to defend themselves, for them to form up their own organizations. This is a, this is a result of, of the fact that COSATU is not fighting for their conditions and they had to develop new organizations. And when those new organizations came about, it came into conflict, and what happened? The government cracked down. A brother earlier said, the best thing we can do is organize here to organize and support there. Our internationalism is important and our fight to nationalize the extraction companies here is just as important. We see what happened in Chevron. We see the capitalists in Richmond, in San, where are they, San? Out there, San Ramon, but our refineries here in Richmond. We know that they can't run the extraction industry safely. On September 3rd, we're asking people to come out and support a demonstration for expropriation of the Chevron and all the big oil industries as an example of what we have to fight for. At, at 10 o'clock at uh, downtown uh, Point Richmond, we're going to be down there. So we support the South African miners, we support the workers wherever they stand up against imperialism, and we fight against it here at home. Thank you very much. Hey everybody, I'm really glad to see everybody come out tonight. I'm just going to read an open letter from the Occupy Oakland Labor Solidarity to the striking lawnmen miners. To the workers striking against lawnmen PLC. We are the Labor Solidarity Committee of Occupy Oakland. We've been watching your struggle and are inspired by the strength, courage, and determination you have shown. We always support any and all workers who realize their power and stand up to fight back against injustice. We see that those injustices come from the bosses, the government, and even supposed allies. None have fought with more fervor and righteous persistence as you. Few have ever faced the horrors that you have in return. We are mournful from and enraged by the brutality we know you have suffered. These actions must not go unanswered. We extend to you a hand of solidarity from across the globe. We want to fight alongside you. We are workers also. Your battles are our battles. We are, the, we are on the same side, and we share enemies on the other side. We call on all people who have only their labor to survive, and any of their organizations, to not just speak about and write resolutions about, but to act in solidarity with you. We would like to see action against any company that buys, transports, or invests in products from Lawn and PLC. This includes refusing to install, sell, use, or transport products containing materials from this mine. It also includes shutdown actions 
against investors and companies that service Longman PLC. We also support every effort to resist unjust economic and government systems, including your actions in resisting murderous, violent police. This is another common battle that we share. Lastly, we support your ability to organize in the way that you as workers decide in order to combat the injustices you face. We will do whatever we can to support and defend you. This is one fight. We should be one fist. In mourning, outrage, and solidarity, the Occupy Oakland Labor Solidarity Committee. Long live the Lawnman Mine Rebellion, and long live the Oakland Commune, and fuck the police! I was on an international tour and spoke at the Oakland Coliseum. At that time, after the actions by the International Longshoremen Warehouse Local 10, with their slogan of an injury to one is an injury to all, most of the unions of the South African trade union movement adopted their as a slogan, an injury to one is an injury to all. You can see on their banners, they all have that. Apparently, they've forgotten what that really means. We know what that means. We know that it means that we need to defend the international working class wherever it's in struggle, whether it's Argentina, whether it's in Brazil, whether it's in Mexico. We all know that there's struggles been going on there. The kind of things that need to be addressed is that the workers in the in the mines need to form their own investigative committee to examine and control an investigation of what happened in this massacre and similar massacres. We know that the mines and the industries of South Africa need to be expropriated and put under workers' control as the same things need to be done here in the United States. We know that we need to work across the lines of politics to, to fight for democratic militant fighting trade union movement that, that goes forward to organize workers to expropriate capitalism in South Africa and around the world. Thank you for supporting the South African miners. They were the center and the main force that were responsible for the overthrow of apartheid in South Africa, and we need to go farther and expropriate capitalism with their support in South Africa. Uh, an investigation into this by the African National Congress is essentially useless because if you've seen the video, there's no need to investigate. They used tear gas to put those miners in a position where they could be mowed down. Forty or more people are dead right now because a, a platinum mine a platinum mine. Now where does platinum get sold in the United States? Not so much in Oakland, but I see a lot of it in the financial district right across the bridge. Now, today it's really nice to see a lot of the same faces at this action today. But it also speaks to the fact that we had to do this on a very short notice. And if we actually want to do something for the memory of these miners, we need more people that we don't recognize at rallies like this. We need forums that just don't speak to what we already know or use vocabulary that only we can understand. We need something bigger and we need something better. We need something that's actually of the people, for the people, not just organized by a minority of the people. Um, I'd just like to say, uh, I wasn't supposed to speak today. I was asked by Gerald, so you know, out of respect. Thank you for being here. I'd like to call for, if it's not too uh, much, a moment of silence yeah. in memory of the workers. Yes. Starting now. They'll never do a chant again, they'll never march in the streets again, they'll never stand up to the police again. Like so many other fallen friends, i um, like to dedicate this to the memory of those who gave their lives, or had their lives taken from them in Africa, South Africa, and uh, to the steps forward, which involve getting a lot more people out here, not just us.
Yo, there are many, many beautiful faces here. Thank you. Long live Oakland County and fuck the place. I'm working on a report about this for KPFA and WBAI, KPFA's sister station in New York. And I just wanted to let you know that Lawnman, the mining corporation, has lost close to a billion dollars over this. And their CEO has been indefinitely hospitalized. They are going through this because they didn't want to pay another $34 million a year to these miners. And somebody contacted me on Thursday morning to say there was a rally at Oscar Grant Plaza in Oakland. I said, oh, that's interesting. He was from Joh Johannesburg. I said, I just woke up in Oakland. <laughs> so, and he was excited about it because Occupy Oakland has such a reputation around the world that they were really excited that there was going to be a rally here in Oscar Grant. Danny G. So you're supporting your worker brothers in South Africa? Yeah, because it's a worker issue. Okay. I've uh, been a union man uh, for 30 years. My family's been in the union. My grandfather fought in the bloody strike of 1934 to start the long term in union. And I feel that, you know, all workers should have been here. It's very disappointing to me to see that only some workers are here. It should have, this place should be mass packed, you know, because of what's happening. Happening. If this would have happened here, it would have been, I think all the workers would have been here. But they think that because it happened in an international country, they don't have to worry about it. But it will happen here soon if we don't stand up and stop this now. That's all I got to say. You remember your shop steward? I'm the chief uh, shop steward for uh, the trade show division. By the system that we live in, how our minds are colonized. A horrified by the slaughter of the platinum miners in South Africa. And it goes without saying, everybody is horrified by that. But I think also, as Ann mentioned, of the importance of our participation here. It's one of the first in the United States to rally in solidarity with the miners. And why that's so important is because it goes out all over the world. Because people see here in Oakland, people standing up in solidarity. And that emboldens people to go to do something elsewhere as well. It emboldens the people in South Africa to know that they have that support. And that type of solidarity is so important and so crucial. So uh, it's great that everybody's here. When I go back to New York in a few weeks, hopefully we'll organize a uh, rally there that's similar to this. I remember a few years ago when the farm workers in South Africa went on strike because their river was being polluted by the mining interests that were being done and they couldn't drink the water. They, couldn't, they were dying from all sorts of diseases and ailments due to the that, who, uh, people who lived downstream from the water that was being polluted by the factories and the mines there. And here in the United States, workers went on strike in solidarity of Union Carbide, I believe it was, with the four workers in South Africa. And that's the way the solidarity works. The circle of struggle around the world gets real things done, doesn't just raise demands in the abstract, but fights here and now to put in place the kind of support that's needed to make the struggle happen all over the world. I think of that when the government in South Africa signed the uh, agreement with the IMF, the International Motherfuckers we call them, but the International Monetary Fund, and they were, once they signed that agreement, the Structural Adjustment Program Agreement, they were forced to increase and intensify the exploitation of the miners and other workers. They were forced to police those workers with it, just to intensify the police presence in order to produce for the export market, the platinum, the gold, everything else, all for the export market, not to feed people in South Africa, not to for the benefit there. So we ask, what is the platinum used for? Well, it's used in our catalytic converters and automobiles. 
It's used in high-end electronics. It's used by many record, uh, record artists, recording artists, who get platinum records when they sell, what is it, 500,000 albums. You know, we can laugh at this, but I would just like to point out that there's an ecological dimension as well as a labor dimension, as well as a direct economic dimension to what's going on there. It's our job as the Greens, as Greens, I believe, to unfold that dimension so that it becomes visible and so we can take action around it. And I implore, beg people here who are involved in different life struggles to help raise the ecological dimension as well as the other dimensions in the struggle. And I call on Bruce Springsteen and others to return their platinum records as a symbolic gesture to raise this issue and make it a national issue. Around our old home for Occupy Oakland, right? Who's going to tolerate that? We need to make sure we let them know how unwelcome they are in the city of Oakland. They have drained the people here. They've taken homes. They've taken our money. They've raised our fees. If we have banked with Chase in the past, hopefully we don't anymore. But let's put the focus back on these banks that are draining our own country here. Solidarity to South Africa. They have their struggle, and we need to remember, too, we got our struggles here. Ah, money, money.